I'll just run down through it and kind of show you guys what we had put together just to kind of scrape the surface. So um, can you all see my screen here? Yeah. So this this part of the, the presentation is obviously more specific to merchant services and, and electronic payments. So this is me and Charlie in our, our professional state here, <laughs> not sitting at our houses at our, our kitchen tables. Um, this is when we, we get all dolled up. So again, um, I handle merchant services for KeyBank for um, basically Waterville and South, right, right straight down through the state. Um, Charlie handles the northern area as well as um, out on the coast, Belfast, Rockland, Camden, that area. Um, so we're both, you know, equal partners, um, just a ge geographical difference there. Um, but we are branch partners, so we support our branches um, when it comes to merchant services. We're both key bank employees um, who have been here for quite a few years, um, and we both started our banking careers on the retail side, so working in the branches um, with key bank. So we have been on both sides, um, and we've been working with small businesses for, for quite some time. Um, so we, we feel like we have a lot of value to add, and we've both been working with electronic payments for just under, I think, four years now. We both um, started on this team at the exact, on the exact same day, actually. Um, so this is just kind of an overview of what Merchant Services does. So we're definitely not a one-size-fits-all solution. Um, we can help... Uh, a range of different businesses with getting paid. Um, that's what we specialize in. We specialize in helping our small business clients get paid, which is very important. Um, it's not something that we want to take our clients a very long time. Um, and it's not something that we want to cost them a ton of money. Um, so we try to kind of optimize those two things. Um, we can help with um, mail order or telephone order. So taking payments over the phone and invoicing, which has become much more popular um, within the last year because of the you know, reduction in, in contact. Um, we do offer retail POS solutions, so that's like for your restaurants. Um, we do e-commerce, so um, website purchases um, or even, you know, donate now buttons on website. Um, and then my screen here so I can see the rest of the presentation. Um, and then obviously e existing POS integrations, um, which may be more popular with some of the, the lodging businesses um, who have really niche systems um, that they use for check-ins, check-outs, things like that. In many cases, we can come in on the back end and just handle their processing for them um, while they continue to utilize the software that they already have in place. So we have a pretty wide range of ways that we can help our clients accept payments. Um, and so there was some information here on security. So um, one of the bullet points that we had put in the presentation was that we were going to talk about, um, you know, how do we cut down on chargebacks? How do we make sure we're PCI compliant? Um, how do we make sure um, our cardholder information is secure? And um, just basically, you know, making sure that we're, we're avoiding those costly chargebacks now that we're taking a lot of payments over the phone. Um, so some of the tools that we have available um, for security, and Charlie, I don't know if you, I know you originally were going to talk about this slide and I just stole your thunder, but did you want to add anything? This is more Charlie's wheelhouse. So did you want to add anything to that one? Yeah, sure. The, the security piece is, it's starting to become a little bit more front in center now with a lot more sales being done over the phone and it, when the card is not present like that um, wh what it does is it, it it opens you up to a chargeback and anybody in the restaurant industry knows this better than Cassie and I would um, it, it, when the customer is not there presenting the card in person you're, you're open to a chargeback so one of the things that we do to Cassie's point is we try to make um, we, we try to figure out different ways that the restaurant or the business can accept the payment right so whether that is um, online ordering for a website or if it is invoicing the customer uh, directly it, the security that goes along with that and the the likelihood of it being disputed down the road it's a lot less likely so we have a few different uh, ways to to get that payment to the restaurant 
that doesn't involve opening them up to any liabilities. Yeah, and this is really an individualized conversation that we have with the client. Um, you know, a, a business may have had one chargeback in their entire life, but if that's a, a $2,000 chargeback, um, that's a big deal. So it's really something that we want to take, um, you know, uh, an early stance on and make sure that they are informed and understand how to avoid that and understand what the risk is. Um, I have a restaurant that I work with that since COVID, they're only doing takeout, um, but they have a lot of people not showing up to pick up their food orders. So they started taking payments over the phone, um, which is fine, but it's really important to understand that that carries both a higher cost as well as more risk. So they found that they had customers that were getting really um, creative and sneaky and they were disputing the transactions after they had you know gotten their food and they knew that they could get away with it because the payment was taken over the phone so because that card wasn't chipped um it was an automatic charge back to the restaurant which is really expensive um, it probably more expensive than someone not showing up to get their food so those are the kinds of conversations that we can have with small business clients to help them understand you know what the risks are and how to avoid them um we had mentioned something about just you know um pricing and how to make sure you're getting the best pricing um so there's just a screenshot here of one of a, a key bank merchant statement most of the businesses we work with um don't review their merchant statements on a regular basis so just you know a, a reminder to in you know encouragement to review their statements know where to find them um a lot of them are electronic now so you don't actually get anything in the mail um, but this statement here breaks down what all of the fees are associated with accepting card pay card payments um, and really important to keep an eye on um, and then just being able to work with your merchant services provider to find the best pricing program for your business because one size fits all pricing isn't the best for everyone um, customer base average transaction size and monthly volume all play a part in what that pricing program should be um, and we are definitely not one size fits all so we can work with clients to really uncover um, how they're taking how they're getting paid who their customers are and what's going to be the best option for them um, we also can help them get PCI compliant, um, PCI non-compliance fees can range anywhere from $29.95 per month. I've seen them all the way up to $399 per month. Um, one of our biggest competitors here in the state of Maine charges $125 a month. So it's not unheard of. I would say probably more statements that we look at than not have non-compliance fees on them. Um, so we're going to help clients get PCI compliant, which is going to give them better protection as well as save them a lot of money. Um, and then, you know, we can talk about if we have businesses that are fully seasonal, like they completely shut down for a period of the year, um, we have the, the ability to close that merchant account temporarily so that they're not paying monthly fees when they don't need it. Um, and then we also, you know, have been hearing a lot about businesses um, being approached by merchant services providers saying that they can obviously save them a ton of money um, and or even reduce their fees to zero by passing those fees on to their customers, which is not legal in the state of Maine. So we're always happy to have, even though our, our you know, small businesses in the state of Maine are always solicited to this. Um, so we're always have, happy to have a conversation about that if a, a business is considering charging their clients um, for paying with a credit card and, and what the um, risks are to doing that since it's not legal. <laughs> um, just some slides here on um, some of the solutions that we offer. So this falls under the, the POS um, retail solution category. So this is for retail, restaurants, um, and many other types of businesses we use these for as well. Um, but this is kind of one of the, the, big, the bigger tools that we offer within Key Merchant Services. Um, and then the, this is the coolest thing, in my opinion, that we offer, which is the Clover Flex. Um, we have a lot of restaurants who are utilizing this um, tool specifically because it's wireless. So this, this device allows a restaurant to be able to do curbside, be able to take payments right at their customer's window. Um, it also allows them to take um, orders and payments right at the table. 
Um, it's completely contactless um, and, and gives the restaurant owner the ability to do that. Additionally, for lodging, um, this can serve as a standalone terminal, a standalone credit card terminal to process payments. We have a lot of clients who just use this as a credit card terminal and not necessarily the full POS. It can function on either end of that spectrum and anywhere in between. Um, but it does have, you know, the chip card availability. It also has the NFC reader, which can um, take um, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, all of the tap cards. So really cuts down on that contact, has a built-in receipt printer, um, and uh, will do everything that the full big POS system will do. And it, just to circle back to the flex part real quick too, it, it, curbside, obviously, again, I don't need to tell anybody here, curbside is becoming more and more popular and it's in demand. And when we're driving around and we see a restaurant that is closed for dine-in, but they're doing uh, curbside or uh, whatever you want to call it, they're walking the, the food from inside the restaurant out to the person's car. So what that does is they bring the flex with them. They can actually run the customer's card in person with what Cassie was saying just right then. It's, it's a huge difference in the security and also the rate that's being paid. All right. So this is one of the things where anytime I drive by a place, there's a Chinese restaurant right up the road from here. I've mentioned it to her a few times and I cannot get her to take it because she doesn't have Internet at the at the restaurant. So it does need Internet or you need to have a cell signal um, inside the flex. There's a SIM card inside of these devices so you know you can walk this thing right out to the car and one thing that happens when you're doing that is you're getting a tip or you you're 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 able to get a tip when you might not have been able to get one originally so we see a lot of benefit in this just for walking it outside yeah, sorry, sorry to cut you off, Kat. No, no, I, I appreciate your insight as well. Um, and it actually made me think of another thing too, is we, um, I have mentioned it very quickly, but you can bring these devices right to the table at a in-dining um, experience and send orders to the kitchen right from this device, which is something that we're seeing a lot more of in other countries, um, but it, it's coming to the States and it's starting to be popular. And you can take your, the payment right in front of that customer. So no longer am I walking into a back room with a customer's card not knowing if I'm ever going to come back, I can just take the payment right at that, the customer's table, give them their receipt. I can text their receipt or email a receipt as well um, if the client prefers. So because this is an app-based system, um, it's very customizable. I know we're speaking to just a couple of different you know, industries today, um, but it is very customizable. Some of the, the things that um, are universal are it comes with a free um, time clock. So for employees, um, within this time clock, you can now also program in um, a questionnaire for your employees to fill out every time they clock in. So when they clock in, it can ask them, you know, do you have a fever today? Do you have any of the, the common COVID symptoms? Have you been in contact with anyone? And it will pop right up on the screen and ask your employee these questions so that not only are you doing your due diligence as a business owner, but you have a record of those answers as well. Um, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And so within the home base um, app, you can also build out schedules. You can text reminders or your employees can set up to have reminders texted to them for when they have shifts. Um, there's some securities in place. Some, um, some of the devices will actually take the employee's picture when they punch in um, just to make sure that there's no um, funny business going on with um, employees punching each other in and out. Um, there is an app that will sync everything to QuickBooks. We know a lot of our small business clients use QuickBooks for accounting, so there's an app for that. Um, there's a great sales tax app, which our, um, our restaurant lovers, our restaurant owners love, as well as many other um, businesses love. It will actually collect, um, it'll sweep out sales tax on a daily basis. So it's actually pulled out of your account automatically. And then they will file and pay your sales taxes for you automatically on a monthly or quarterly basis so that you can literally just set it and forget it. 
Um, this is actually an app that was developed in Maine, um, right in, I think it started in Gorham or Westbrook, right in that or area. Brunswick, yeah. Yeah, right yeah area. somewhere in that area. But yeah. This is, yeah, it's a super cool app. Um, we, we learned from them that, you know, with restaurant sales tax, it's one of the, the main reasons yeah. why restaurants don't survive. So this is another tool that we can offer. That's, um, that's okay. the Clover app or a different one? So Clover is the software. These are apps that are available to put with on Clover. And yep. these are all key bank apps or mm -hmm. just ones that you're working with? Yeah, so Clover, um, within the Clover app market, there are um, apps that are owned and offered by Clover. And then there's also third party apps, just like if you went on to your cell phone and downloaded an app, you, you could get third party apps. So some of these are Clover apps and some of them are third party apps. The Davo Sales Tax app is a third party app. Oh, I wondered about that. They're one of our new outline members. Oh, cool. And they wanna do one of these. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> we we know him very well, and he um he likes to present. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he probably could do a really great presentation. Um, and then hopefully send everyone that's interested over to us to to get the well, <laughs> You know, I, I I do feel bad that no one else is here. Um, so we are gonna set one up with Dabo. I don't know if it if it would make sense for Cassie for you to be involved with that because we are trying to come up with a hook for that one and their marketing manager said we can talk about apps for apps yeah yeah it might make sense for us to team up we've we've done a few joint presentations with him before um just you know at the branch level and at the client level um so it, it might make sense we could definitely you know discuss that further that yeah would be helpful yeah, so it's a very customizable system. This is just a small snippet of the apps or some of the apps that are available. I think, Charlie, keep me honest, but I think there's over 300 at this point, 200 or 300 apps that are available. Um, these are just kind yeah. of more popular ones. Yeah, sounds about right. And yeah, each one has a trial. It, typically, they have trials. So it's you can sign up for it, give it a shot. And if you don't like it within the first minute or two, you can just uninstall it give it the 14 day trial um, there are a few on there which in the restaurant section that are pretty good and one example is chowley and uh, chowley for anybody that's doing doordash or uber eats or whatever they might have three or four or five different ipads inside of their restaurant and when an order comes in online it's going to fire to the ipad then they have to go over to their point of sale they have to enter everything into the point of sale so this third party app actually has the restaurant take that tablet that will say DoorDash gave them, get rid of the tablet and everything would flow right through here. All right. So there are, there are some really good benefits to, uh, to some of the apps that are in here. Right. Yeah. Thank you for highlighting that one, Charlie. You're right. We have a lot of restaurants who have turned to services like DoorDash and, and whatnot. And it's not a great process. Um, basically, like he said, the order comes into a tablet. The um, you know hostess or wait staff then needs to take that order and enter it into their POS system to send it to the kitchen mark it as paid and it's it messes up all of their accounting it's not a good system so this will integrate all of them into one system and it will send it automatically to the kitchen so it that is a really great one to highlight um so just going to touch briefly on this this is more restaurant specific um this is clover online ordering so this is something that we rolled out or that clover rolled out um shortly after covid i think started when restaurants were scrambling to find online ordering options we still have found though that many restaurants that we work with really want to be able to do Clover online order or want to be able to do online ordering, but really have no idea where to start. Um, think it's going to be a really big undertaking. It's going to be really expensive. Um, this is something super simple that we can help set up. And right now it's free. Um, it, when you have Clover, it, this is a free service. Um, they'll actually build the, the web page for online ordering and link it to their website and link it to, um, you know, like a Google search. Yeah. Um, and this is something super simple that we can help them set up and start. Has that, has that been pretty popular for you? 
Yeah, it definitely has. I know, Charlie, you've done a bunch of them just with our existing yeah. clients. Um, they've turned to us and, and asked for help with it. And we have a lot that have gone from, you know, doing things the old fashioned way, just taking orders over the phone to this system. Um, I know they've had a lot of issues with phone lines being tied up and um, not being able to get through. And there's a restaurant here in my area and you can call them, you know, 10 times and the line's always busy. So um, something like this is customizable so they can set it and say, you know, how many orders are we going to take within this yeah. time frame so they're not going to get overwhelmed. Um, but it's a great and way. That's to part of the Clover service if you purchase the Clover. Yep. If you purchase the Clover POS system, this is something that come, comes with it standard feature. Right. Um, and then just wanted to touch on some contactless options that we also rolled out within the last year, mostly they were, we were working on rolling them out, but they got a little bit expedited due, due to COVID. Um, so right now um, our Clover client guests can now scan a QR code to view an online menu. So what we found is a lot of restaurants are um, providing paper menus that they have to throw away after every customer. Um, so they can now put a, um, I saw one the other day in, in a window, a great big like QR code, um, but they can put that QR code really anywhere within the restaurant. The customer can use their phone to scan that code and get access to the full menu of the restaurant. They don't necessarily need to order online, but they can look up the menu um, and then order from yeah. the wait staff. Yeah, I've, seen um, that at, I've done that at Luke's Lobster in Portland. Yeah. The, yeah. customer. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure. I've heard of them, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's becoming, you know, very popular. Um, I read, I met with a business, a restaurant down in Old Orchard Beach the other day. And we were talking about that because in the summertime, you know, they're really concerned. They don't want a bunch of customers coming inside um, to order or to look at their menus um, for takeout. They really want to keep people outside. So they have, you know, the QR codes right in their windows, right outside. So you can literally stand, you know, on the side of the street, which many people do in Old Orchard Beach in the summer, um, take a, you know, shot of that QR code, you know, at least look at the menu, even place your order right online, and then either, you know, walk into just to pick up the food or you can even bring the food right outside to them. Now, was, was this designed before COVID or is it an answer to COVID? I think it was in progress. <laughs> I think it got um, moved along a little bit quicker because of COVID, but it was definitely in progress. Um, and then the, la the last pillar of it is that um, guests can complete their payment with their mobile device. So as a wait staff, when I print off their bill and I put it on their table, it can have a QR code on that bill that the customer can take a snapshot of that QR code and complete their payment right on their mobile device. Um, so just more tools to cut down on contact, um, streamline things, get guests in and out quicker, um, which is important, and maybe even you know be able to manage guests um, effectively with less wait staff. And I'll add to that real quick, Cassie, if I can, is one thing that we noticed was the online ordering piece is actually customizable. So the website part that's being built can actually, is going to be the same that a customer would see when they scan the QR code that Cassie's talking about. So it pulls up the online ordering page and what the restaurant can do is they can move certain items to the top or they can move items down below. So if they actually have a surplus of something that they need to sell by a certain time or a certain day, they, the restaurants that move that to the top are actually seeing those sell faster, right? And it was not something that was intended by Clover when they rolled this out, but it is something that they noticed. So they're starting to say, you know, if you have something that needs to go by, we'll say next Thursday, we got to move that up to the top. So editing the specials and that another benefit to it. Yeah. yeah to cut down on waste. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
So this, this slide here is really um, pertinent to any business. Um, this is just a snapshot of what we call the Clover dashboard. So anytime you purchase any Clover device, whether you're going to use it as a full restaurant POS or whether you're going to use it as a credit card terminal, um, you get access to this Clover dashboard, which you can access from anywhere. Um, you can access it um, on any, you know, web browser through Clover.com, or you can. It, we also have it. It also has a mobile app where you can access it. So any restaurants, mainly that are working off from some of the older POS systems, don't have this capability, and love that they're able to access this information from wherever they are. Um, so they can pull this up, get real time numbers. I pulled this from one of our real clients this morning and I could see that already today that they had done um, $476 in sales. It's um, cloud-based so these are real in-time numbers. Um, so I can pull any kind of reporting that I want. I can pull it by day, by employee, by which items are selling the most, which items are selling the least. Um, I can pull tip reporting. Um, I can pull uh, payroll reporting from here. Um, I can add or remove employees from here. Um, I can update my inventory, update specials, prices, um, really anything I could possibly need to do uh, with regarding my, my POS system, we can do from this dashboard. So this is a nice Kathy, tool. Yeah. May I, um, regarding the, the workforce component, when you, when you say you can add employees, does it include scheduling at all or? Yeah, so you can, um, great question. So from the dashboard, you can click on home base. It will bring you to a separate portal, which is the home base portal. Um, but you can do all of your scheduling from there. You can pull the um, time reports to send to your payroll company from there. So you can access all of that. It's not, the, the link to it is in Clover, the Clover dashboard, but it links you over to the home base app. Cool, thank you. So it sort of cuts back on administrative costs on that end as well. Yeah, absolutely. It, or has it the potential. Could. Right, yeah. Cool. Absolutely, yeah. So this Thank is you. Just, That's helpful. You're welcome. And this the access to this dashboard can be given to anyone within the business that needs it. So right now we know um, a lot of businesses have people working remotely. Um, I, I just worked with someone, you know, their CFO is working remotely, but everyone else is in the office. So we need to give access, you know, obviously the CFO would need access anyway, um, but she can get access from home um, and, and be able to pull up all this information right from home. And the owner of the business or the manager has the full access to update all of these things. So, you know, with the older systems, a lot of times if you want to make changes, you have to, you know, if you want to make changes to your menu or changes to who has access to the system, you have to reach out to the POS provider. This gives you a lot of control to be able to do it all yourself right through the dashboard. And I'll add to that real quick too, the one benefit that we're seeing more and more of are CPAs. So we'll say this restaurant is ABC Corp, right? Now go to the employee section and add an employee. And what you can do is actually add your CPA or your accountant to it. And what that accountant can now do is log into Clover and pull whatever information they need to get from Clover without having to bother the restaurant owner. So another benefit to the uh, to the cloud-based dashboard. Yeah. yeah, sounds like it saves a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and to that point, Charlie, um, it also gives you control over the permissions. So basically when you set up employees, um, you give them each a title. So whether that be wait staff, you know, head of house, um, whatever that may be, front, you know, office manager, um, you control who can access what. So who in your business do you want to be able to issue refunds? Who do you want to be able to close out or adjust tips or, you know, look at reporting or change inventory? Um, you have full control over which positions can make those changes or access that information. Um, from our experience working with restaurants, that's where most of the fraud comes from. Um, wait staff um, deleting checks or deleting items off from checks or refunding checks. Um, 
can cost restaurant owners thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, so this is really going to put a checks and balances system in place um, so that you don't have to worry about those things. Um, but that brings us to the end of the slides that I've prepared. So, um, and I was just going to open up to questions. I don't know if anyone here has um, has any questions? I was just wondering, at, at which point do you think uh, a business would purchase this? And it, you know, like with us, if we're out talking to members and some of them just opened or they've been open for a while, when would be a good time for them to think about Clover? Yeah, I think it really varies for the business. Um, it, it really varies depending on, you know, if some of these tools are something that they've been thinking about, what we're finding is they are, they're tools that, that people are thinking about um, and, and they're not sure, they don't have a local person to work with on their existing POS system. They're not really sure where to start. Um, and that's a great time for us to start the conversation. Obviously anyone starting a new business, it's a great time for us to talk to them. Um, but if usually we find that, you know, many restaurants are working off some of the older legacy POS systems that don't have any of these functions. Um, and so that's really right now we're finding a lot of restaurants are looking for those features specifically. 